In this video, we'll see how to use a magnetic contact with a mesh-tastic radio. In order to make sense, you will need at least two mesh-tastic radios and a magnetic switch, also known as a reed switch. Of course, we'll also need a soldering iron and a resistor, but this one is being optional as we'll see later in a video. Once you understand the principle after watching this whole tutorial, you will need to count between 15 to 20 minutes to complete the project. A reminder for those who would like some context, MeshTastic is an open source network that allows users to communicate without amateur radio license and thus break free from conventional networks like cellular networks or Wi-Fi networks. So far, it's possible to achieve very impressive distance with MeshTastic, which is based on LoRa technology. However, this will depend on the type of radio used, your antenna and its environment. There is a page in the official documentation about using modules and detection sensors. However, it took me a while to understand certain difference, even though the theory was here and I found there is very little content in French on the subject and even in English speaking cycles. It's either considered obvious or I had really misunderstood it. Anyway, enough talk, let's dive into the topic. In the first step, I will start preparing the radio that will serve as a sensor. I am using an Altec Mark III and I will solder my magnetic switch to GPIO 7 and the ground. Additionally, in the example, I wanted to show you we need to add a pull-up resistor to reduce the electric current in the red switch when the door is open. Here I have decided to use a 10k resistor but we'll see later that it's possible to use GPIO 46 on this board to avoid installing an additional resistor and I will let you verify the compatibility of your MeshTastic device with the GPIO port to be used. In the second step, we will see how to install the latest stable beta firmware on our radios. To flash the firmware, I will use the official MeshTastic web flasher from flasher.meshtastic.org Org. As you can see, it is really easy to use with the latest update from last year. You will need to first select the model you are using and the firmware you want to use. I will select the LTEC version 3 with the latest stable firmware available at that time. Then you click on Flash a change log window will pop up and you will need to hit continue button. Thus, we could select if we want to keep the parameters already saved on the board and also if we want to integrate the web interface to use with device that don't have the mesh-tastic application. Since I have no settings I need to backup, I am okay to wipe the device. In case you wanted to update the device without wiping it, I still recommend you to take a backup from let's say the keys and all the settings you have. We never know what could happen. And for the web interface, I have already the application installed on two smartphones. So I will continue using them in this video. 
since it's easy to carry around and really simple to use. In the third step, we are going to prepare the sensor for configuration. Still with our LTEC, we will establish our first connection, like all Bluetooth devices. You need to connect to our radio using a unique code over Bluetooth. Once connected, we can navigate through the settings. We start by modifying the base channel by giving it a unique name. Then we need to define a key that will be used to encrypt communication. We really need to do that because the sensor detection module is disabled for the default channel. This will indeed reduce spam and yes, we wouldn't want all the neighbors to know when you are opening the door, would we? There you have it, your own channel, keep the key safe and not on a sticky note, please. No, we go to the device section and we'll define the role of our radio. Here's a sensor for those following along we change the role to correspond to the sensor and we hit save. We return to the settings and go to the module configuration section. Here we will go to the detection sensor. We start by activating the sensor option and then we scroll down to the sensor option and activate the bell. Hey, if you'd like this channel, don't hesitate to do the same on YouTube. It really helps me. In name, here we define the name of our sensor. I'm going to call it door or port in French. GPIO pin to monitor. Here we select the GPIO port we sold it to, the 7 one. And trigger type, type of triggering. Here I hope you're ready to take out a piece of paper for note because there are six Ks. Let's review all the trigger type value that you could use for our example here, the magnetic read switch. I will start with the low one. It's triggered when the magnetic switch closes. That means the circuit is completed and the GPIO read as low in pull-up mode. An example with a use case, it will, let's say, detect the presence of the magnet, for example, when the door is closed. Hi, it's triggered when the magnetic switch opens. The circuit is broken and the GPIO read as high in pull-up mode. For the use case, we will detect here the absence of the magnet, for example, when the door is open. Falling edge, triggered during the transition from high to low, from open state to closed state. For the use case, it detects the exact moment when the door closes. Rising edge, triggered during the transition from low to high, so from closed state to open state. For the use case, it will detect the exact moment when the door opens. And the last, either edge low or high, it's triggered on transition in both directions, either from low to high or from high to low, door opening or closing. And for the use case, you will detect any state change, whether the door opens or closes. Useful for logging each event, for instance. Let's sum up when you want to use each type. Low, you only want to know if the door is currently closed. High, you only want to know if the door is currently open. Falling edge, you want precisely to detect the moment where the door closes. Useful for immediate alerts. Rising edge, you want to precisely detect the moment when the door opens. Useful to know when someone enters. Either edge, you want to capture both events 
Door opening, closing, for log or complete movement analysis. All these options allow you to adapt the system to different scenarios according to your needs. For example, for a security alert, you might use Rising Edge to detect a door opening attempt in real time. For activity history, you understand either edge will be more appropriate. Regarding the pull-up resistance, as mentioned earlier in the video, depending on your model, you most likely have one that you could configure. I encourage you to dive into the documentation to verify. On my end, I could have simply used the port 46 on my board. But where would the fun be in that? I prefer to break out the soldering iron and perform some stunts without safety nets. And the final point of our sensor, the update interval. Minimum time between detection broadcast, this parameter will be responsible for the message flow frequency on our channel. And lastly, the frequency of sending the detection sensor state of the network, regardless of detection, this really makes sense here in case where we have a very high update interval and we want to have a fixed time reminder of the value measured by the GPIO port. I hope the instructions were clear, otherwise it's always easier to pause and go back in the video for the sensor part. Now we'll move to another radio, which will be the one present at our control station in our case. You want to monitor the use of a door or whatever other uses we might find, but in this video it's really about monitoring a door or window with this magnetic sensor, as known as the read switch. I will skip the installation from scratch on the other radio. Once we're connected, let's go through our nodes. Step 1. We'll go to the setting and channel configuration. You need to select the main channel and configure it with the same parameters as the sensor. That is the name, the key size and the key that we predefined. Once it is saved, go back to the settings with the device configuration and open the device menu. For the role, select client and save. Then go to the module configuration and select detection sensor. Enable it with client's type and I enable notification. I can receive them on my smartphone in addition to the Mestastic radio if it has a screen, LID, vibrator or even a speaker. Are you interested in that too? I've already covered this topic in a video that you can find here. Then save and our configuration is now completed. To summarize, we now have two meshtastic radios on the same primary channel, both encrypted with a symmetric key. One of the radios has a sensor role and the other one has a client role. Now I will move on to the demo since seeing it in action it's worth more than any description. If you are starting the video, we'll now see all the notification works. I will simulate opening the door with the magnetic sensor solder onto the module that has the sensor roll. You can mount the magnetic switch on the surface using a double-sided tape to install it on a window or door, for example. In this demonstration, the trigger type is configured to high. And as you can see, the read switch is closed. So the door is closed. And then the door value reported on the client screen shows zero. When I move the read switch, as like I will open a door, we first see a notification indicating activity at the door. Then we get a no new notification status. It changes from zero to one, meaning the door is open. Notification are broadcast every 10 seconds. So since it's called, let's close the door and we'll see a new update. Door is set to zero. We have seen in this video tutorial how to set up the door and window monitoring with Meshtastic, which work at distance of several hundred meters 
up to a few kilometers under favorable conditions. It is an economical solution. The two radios cost less than a hundred of euro or even dollars. The basic sensor costs just a few cents and there is no subscription fees. All the data belongs to you. There is no hidden fees or cloud services. While the setup requires some technical knowledge compared to commercial solutions, I enjoyed walking through this challenge with the help of the community. I learned that the sensor alerts are restricted to the primary channel to prevent any network congestions.